Greg Story, president of the world-renowned Dale Carnegie for leadership, sales presentation, training courses, and more. They're world-renowned as just the best there is. Um, sorry, Dr. Greg Story is also best-selling business author, has been country head of three multinational organizations here in Japan, has a sixth Don black belt in Shitoryu Karate, and holds a BA in Modern Asian Studies, a Master's, and a PhD in Japan Studies. Very happy to have him here today to share some of his expertise. Without further ado, Dr. Greg Story. Damon, thank you very much. And uh, Yamamoto-san and Christian are uh, gonna do all the heavy lifting today. I'm gonna to talk about some practical ideas to help us and I'm thinking particularly about coexistence with COVID-19 because this isn't going away. This is not gonna disappear. We are going to be in a world that's flicking between online and you know, in, in office or in our case as a training company in classroom, probably forever. So what are some things we've got to think about how we can bridge that? And I love that quote from John Maxwell. There's another quote I like, a little bit more concise from uh, Mike Tyson. Everyone has a plan until you get punched in the mouth. And we've all been punched in the mouth by COVID-19. And it's really upset the apple cart for all of us on our plans and what we had in mind. So how do we, how do we think about going forward? And that's the sort of thing I want to touch on today. So a couple of things. You know, when we're thinking about, we're going to be working a lot more at home than in the office perhaps, or be a split between the two, or some groups will go to the office and some will stay at home or rotate. It's gonna be a much more confused working environment than we've seen in the past. One thing though is very important, show up every day with your brain 100% ready to go. That means get into your battle dress, I've got my battle dress on now, ready to fight in the market. And we've gotta be like that, we've gotta be ready to Go 100% from the morning we start. We can't be sort of thinking I'm on half holiday, I'm on half work. No, we've got to be really concentrated to go. And a good thing is start every morning with a huddle for everybody, get everybody together, go through the day. Uh, in our case, Dale Cunning, we go through our vision, mission, values. We go through who we're visiting, who's visiting us, could be online. What are our top three priorities? What's the Dale Cunning principle of the day? We have a set piece, which we had in the office. We just transfer that to the online environment. We kept that continuity and we keep that focus on what we're about. What's our why? What is our why? You know, why are we doing this? And so that becomes very important. Also important to turn the cameras on to make sure everybody's on deck. Now, a lot of people living by themselves or in isolation, they're, they're single or uh, they don't have anyone taking care of. If they get sick, they're on their own. You don't know. So it's good to know everyone is okay every day. And if someone doesn't come online, depending on the size of your work group, good to check in. Are you okay? Are your health is okay? Everything all right? Just to make sure that's a very, very important thing to think about. Also uh, in the office, we would have a lot of informal time, chit chat, you know, over the, you know, at the water cooler, having a coffee together, talking about things. When we're all isolated, those sorts of things disappear. But that's a very important glue in the human connection. And Japan is very much a group oriented culture. We know that it's very, very um, high context. So we need to recreate that glue. Every day, three o'clock, we have our coffee time with Dale. And you can come on at three o'clock, there's a, a WebEx site that you can go to and just chit chat with other people. It doesn't be about work, it can be about anything. To create that human activity, because once we're separated, and in some people might be in the office, some people at home, you're still gonna be separated. We need to have that glue. So we've got to create these opportunities to make fee people feel, okay, I'm connected. I'm not on my own. Another thing is that I'm doing this now. If I had my laptop on the table in front of me, you would be getting a view like that probably. And I go to a lot of webinars and I get a great shot of the inner nasal passage of a lot of strangers. It's like too much information. So, Prop your camera up as a professional, get it to eye height. Now I'm actually using a virtual background uh, just to make it a little bit cleaner than my, my office here at home. 
Uh, it's not perfect. Virtual background is not perfect, but it's a little bit cleaner. And I've got it at a high height so that <clears throat> I'm looking at the camera. I'm not talking to the screen. These are simple things, but as professionals in business, these are the sorts of simple things we've got to at least get those right. Also, uh, I'm sitting, I'm not sitting back in my chair. I'm not leaning back on my couch. I'm not leaning back in my chair like this. I'm sitting forward. I'm sitting upright. I'm showing a posture of credibility, trust, reliability to my audience. And we've got to do that online, be it internal or be it the client or be it an industry. Um, Andrew's on the call today. He was on a, a call later earlier today with the ACCJ where they're talking about moderating on webinars. So he's got to prevent present a very professional image of himself and his organization in that seminar. We are the same, internal, external, it doesn't matter. And also we've got now a tremendous opportunity. There are 12.5 hours at least a week for most people, which we'd use in commuting and lunchtime to use for the personal development. If you're doing, you know, two hours a day, basically, and then you've got, you know, some people got a bit longer, a bit shorter, but lunchtime, you don't really need an hour for lunch anymore, you, you know, you're at home. You can use that time very effectively for self-development. Read about things in your industry, read about things in your market, read about things in your profession, and use that time rather than sleeping in to study. This is one of the, the, the great times where you can research your market in an industry where you're normally too busy to do that, so when you come back to a more normalized, whatever that's going to look like, world, you are more adept, you are more educated, you are more perceptive, you have more insight about your business than you had before COVID-19. And don't just rely on yourself. If everybody in your work group are doing personal development, reading, listening to podcasts, watching YouTube videos, you know, TED Talks, whatever, Share the information. Take 15 minutes a day by rotation. Like it's me today. I'll talk about what I've learned. Tomorrow is Damon. The day after that is Christian. The day after that is, is Yamoto-san. And we share. We, we crystallize the essence of what we've learned. That will give us a tremendous ability to share a lot of information that we're all gathering. Could be on industry. Could be on market. Could be on leadership. Could be on sales. Could be on presentation skills. Could be on any number of subjects. This is a tremendous opportunity to use the joint power, the group sourcing of information, group sourcing of insight that is available to us while we've got this no commuting time. And you don't need an hour for lunch, you know. Uh, what do they say in, in Wall Street? Lunch is for wimps. Well, I'm a bit of a wimp. I like to have lunch. But I don't need an hour because I'm not, I'm not going outside. I'm at home. Now, uh, also, we've got the capacity. You know, we can go. We're on, we're on Zoom. We could go to a whiteboard right now and we could be using text and typing in ideas and we could be brainstorming right now where we are on ideas about how to coexist with the virus in our businesses. So the technology provides you with the capacity to do brainstorming and we should be doing that. We might be doing it internally. We might be doing it with clients. How can we think about the industry going forward? What can we do? These are things, technology makes it available. And one thing though, don't let the tech hijack your presentation. Now I don't have a slide deck here, so I'm on full screen for you. But I did a speech to the British Chamber a couple of days ago, and it's a slide deck, and I'm a tiny square on the real estate of that screen. And the slide deck is hijacking the whole thing. And that's something you've got to be careful about. As as people try and have influence, we've got to make sure that we are the centerpiece, that we have got the voice modulation, the energy, we're trying to make the presence on the deck rather than the slide deck making it. So we've got to be careful about that, that we don't want to have the slide deck take over from us. Make sure we are in command of the material, we're in command of the audience, not the technology. Also, as we know, uh, breakout rooms are great, for getting together, sharing information, just like we're a training company, we would say, okay, uh, Damon, Christian, Yamoto-san, you're a three, over here's a three, over here's a three, in your groups, please discuss something or other and come back and report. So we can do that, we can do that with breakout rooms, we can discuss concepts, we can discuss ideas, we can discuss the future, 
it is all doable with the technology we have today. So let's use it. And also, uh, there's a lot of great training available online. We've been doing online training now for 10 years out of America. And so we're able very quickly to pivot from the experience of that 10 years they did in America to doing it in Japan online. We didn't have to do it online before. We're doing classroom, but we could do that very quickly. So the, the opportunity is there to have uh, a way to make sure that your team is skilling up. Maybe uh, a lot of Japanese companies are very conservative, a bit worried about the virus, don't want to get back together again yet. But now they stopped doing online, oh, sorry, they stopped doing classroom development in February. Now we're here, we're almost in June. They can't leave it go forever. You've got to have some capacity to bring people together and work together and get the training going. So there's a lot of good online training available. Please access that. And also like Damon just used a poll. Polls are great. Polls are great for a couple of things. They're good for humor, make them a bit lighthearted and also use them for self-awareness. Now, everyone's a critic. Everyone's a critic. You say something like, hey, I know that, I've got on top of that. Yeah, what are you talking about? You give people a poll where they have to plumb the depths of their own thinking about a subject. Boom. Up comes the self-awareness instantly. And that starts to get people into a concept of, well, actually, I don't know everything. Actually, I do need the brainstorming. Yeah, I do need to work with my colleagues. I do need to get training. That's a very important self-awareness example that polls bring you. And I encourage you to break the tech. The first time we went to 150 people breakout rooms on WebEx, we broke WebEx. We broke it. But boy, that was very early in the piece. That was back very early in the piece of March. We learned a lot from breaking the tech. I encourage you, break the tech. Push it. Push it as hard as you can. See what's possible. We know that 100 people can do breakout rooms on WebEx. We know that 100 people can do breakout rooms on Zoom. That's it. I don't know about any other technology that allows you to go beyond that. But as far as I know, that's, there might be others. Find out. Break the tech. Don't be contained or constrained by the tech. Also, bring value to your clients. I talked about uh, training. You can bring online training on product, on the market, on industry knowledge to your client. Do that. Get together with your clients and say, let's talk about product. Because now, a lot of product never gets covered. But there's some things that would be very valuable to the clients to learn about the full range of your product or your insights on the industry. Remember, you're A to Z or A to Z, as Americans will say, across all industries in a lot of cases. You're picking up insight. You're picking up ideas across a broad range. Clients tend to be in their very, very narrow corridor. But if you're in sales, you're across a broad corridor. You can bring insight, ideas, information to clients to help them. Please do that. Now, uh, cost cutting. We're doing cost cutting. Everyone's doing cost cutting. One of the things you might find is, okay, Actually, you know what? There are some things we can live without, some things that are not actually needed. We, we were sort of doing it, but we didn't really need it. This might be an opportunity to look at your costs and see if there are things that actually were not adding value, which you just sort of kept them going because you were busy. Maybe this is the time to think about, well, do we really need this anymore? And finally, uh, there are many, many talented people who through no fault of their own have been thrown into the market as mid-career hires. Look for those people. They got talent. Wasn't their fault their company folded. You're looking for good people. They may be out there. You might have some people now which you think and say, you know what? Maybe these people would be better somewhere else. And we carried them for long enough. That sounds a bit harsh on a way to end, but this is a bit of a time for reality as we coexist. We do not eliminate. We coexist with COVID-19 forever. Thank you very much. And I look forward for you to keep well and stay safe. Back to you, Damon.